Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called A Neither Soul. My name is Edo and I am coming to you from Oslo, Norway. As the name suggests, this podcast is uh, primarily about knitting. Uh, so if that is something that you are interested in, then you are more than welcome to spend some time with me. Uh, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. It's nice to spend some time with you again. And if you're a new viewer, I do hope you find something um, of interest. And if you feel like it, then you're very welcome to hit the subscribe uh, button and then you will be notified when I post my next video. Um, so let me start off with a huge thank you to every single one of you who's commented, who subscribed, um, and yeah, who's just really been there and offered me um, words of support and kindness and so much love, I must say. Um, I've been blown away. I've been touched to tears. Um, so yeah, I do appreciate you so, so much and you for taking time out of your day to spend it with me. I, I do appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. So let me start off with a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I will be linking uh, my social media information down below, um, that being um links to my instagram account and to revelry account and both of those channels uh you're welcome to reach out to me if there is anything you wonder about um i will answer as quickly as i can um sometimes it goes very quickly sometimes it takes longer time um especially if i'm in my fatigue very like heavy fatigue periods uh then i have trouble like concentrating and a replying isn't as easy. Um, I will be also linking uh, uh, down below all the patterns I mentioned, the yarn shops, uh, yeah everything will be down below. Uh, if you are interested in um, well actually I'll be mentioning quite a lot of it and I'll, I'll just, just take it as you go. But the m most important thing, um, at the end of my last episode, I had this grandiose idea that I'm going to be giving you, my viewers, um, little gifts in um, the month of March, which is my birthday mon month. Uh, and I wasn't clear enough with which month or like which episode you should be commenting under in order to be uh, eligible for being uh, or for uh, being drawn yeah, as a um, winner of a gift, if I can put it like that. So what I decided to do since I was so vague is, uh, and so many of you have left so, so many beautiful comments, I decided to do an extra draw already from, uh, from the comments of my previous episode. And... The first name I pulled up with uh, you, uh, you, what's it called, a random number generator, YouTube comment, no, random comment picker, YouTube comment picker, yeah. I did that beforehand because I didn't want to be like fumbling with this here um, while recording, so the first name that came up is Inger Johanna, and you will be receiving a bowl of it, it um, Villa Silla um, yarn. Um, it's this beautiful pink, and I also gonna be sending you the stitch markers. Mm, let me just fetch them out for you. Um, these I purchased a while ago on a market with a, um, a plan of using it as a give a giveaway at one point. So 
these will be also added in your package so you just have to reach out with the um, with your address yeah just yeah I need your address and also I'm just gonna tell you quickly that these stitch markers are made by Stricke Markerer uh, by Shashti Annette Christiansen she also has an Instagram handle there I've mentioned yeah, and I will link her below as well. So if you're interested uh, in getting something from her and you know where to find her. And the second name I pulled out is Hilda Andrews. And your gift is going to be um, this skein of sock yarn. Yeah by Arctic Crafts and the name of this colorway is Neon Lights. So it's a self-striping yarn. Uh, it's 8020 BFL wool and nylon yarn. It is so lovely and bouncy and wonderful. And you will <clears throat> also be receiving some stitch markers. These are from I'm suddenly blanking. I will link below or mention below if I am um, saying it wrong. But yeah, this. Oh, they have gone through. One has gone through the other. But yeah, this really sweet, kind of like crystal in different colors. Very hard to show. It's kind of like disappear. Yeah, like they're these very beautiful colors, I think. So it's kind of like the northern skies, the aurora. Yeah, so I think it goes nice with the neon lights. So you as well will have to reach out to me. Um, I guess if, yeah, full name, address, um, uh, either on Ravelry or Instagram. And I will post this to you as soon as possible. And when it comes to my uh, uh, birthday month, March, next episode, so to say, then I was thinking that, yeah, I can do it. Um, I have put together two gifts, but I'm thinking maybe a third one and a fourth one will also be kind of thought out but what I have put together for now is first of all this one this bag by Gunni Ren uh, Gunni's Englistik and it's so well made the details are really really lovely she's got these beautiful finishings it's so beautiful like I, I do love it and um it, you will be receiving two balls of Villa Silla. It looks a bit more bright, this one, I think. It's like a bit like a slightly burnt orange, and then this kind of a pale beige, which I thought was really nice together. It's kind of this like autumnal colors. I know we're going to spring. But I thought that there are some of you who really do love autumnal colors. And I mean, this is wool, so I guess it would be perfect. Either, you know, knit something for Easter time when it's still cold, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere. Or wait till like it gets cold and then knit something out of it. They both are 100 gram balls, so it's a lot of yarn on them it's about 350 meters per ball and so yeah that is gift number one that will be drawn from the comments from underneath this episode just to make that very clear and the second one is actually a gifted bag by Inger Johanna the same Inger Johanna who just won <laughs> which was a coincidence it's not <laughs> Plan. but she 
gifted it back to the podcast for me to give away. Actually, she gifted me too, but I... Uh, well, she did say I could do whatever I wanted to, and I, I decided to keep it. Anywho, I'm digressing. This bag, also very nice details. It has a drawstring clothing. Uh, and what you will be receiving is a also a skein of, or a hank of, uh, Villa Silla yarn, uh, which is 100% wool. And these beautiful green colors and some white and some gray uh, and i was thinking that the 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 random youtube comment picker that i found you can actually put in words to look for in the comments which i didn't know was possible so what i'm thinking is that if you are interesting in winning at all uh if you want to comment then for just commenting you just comment but if you want to win um in march in my next episode meaning you have to comment this episode so i can draw the winners next is that if you want to uh, win this bag with this yarn then you need to comment the word autumn and if you want to win this bag and this yarn then you have to um comment the word spring because i'm thinking like this has autumnal colors this is kind of like a spring wipe going through it with these beautiful like light tones i need to show this side as well this is so beautiful i mean like yeah was, yeah it's so so gorgeous so beautiful so autumn spring and if you either want both of them or neither of them or maybe you want to be also eligible for the surprise whatever gift is going to be then you can comment the word other i think no you know what we'll do uh is just the word gift yeah spring autumn and gift I hope that made sense so yeah if you comment below this one these are the uh, prizes gifts from me to you um yeah i think that's enough in regards of housekeeping but yeah inger johanna and hilda get in touch with me and i will send these to you asap and then put them there. Let's get to the knitting content. What am I wearing today is my Lovetan Mama sweater or dandelion sweater or like I've started to call it now my rainbow sweater. Uh, last time I showed you I think I had done only the neckline and since then I just powered through it and was so enjoying the yarn from Villa Silla called Victoria, which is the rainbow color. And um, I had, uh, uh, oh yeah, the, 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 the pattern is by Tina Hauglund. It is available on Ravelry, um, but if I remember correctly, it is in, only in Norwegian. With that said, if you have any top-down sweater uh, in sport weight, you can just do that. I mean, it just, you know, if you have a pattern from before, you don't need to pad purchase a new one because this is a very simple top-down pattern with a round yoke or like round increases. Uh, I did get gauge actually. I did. I know I said last time that was kind of wild and didn't do any um, gauge before knitting. I just started knitting and went with it, and it was perfect. Uh, and even with the um, correct um, gauge, I found I was getting too much fabric, and I still see I have a little bit too much fabric. But um, yeah, let me just up a little bit so you can see a bit more um 
I knitted all the way down, I think it was around, yeah, it was before I got to the blues, uh, to the greens, and I decided to try it on and see it because I felt like it was a bit too much fabric. And um, it was, it was even bigger than what it was now, is now. So what I did is I ripped back a bit and I cut out one of the increases and just knit it like one less not increase no yeah increase and then just knit it down and got to the blue and then i was like well i need to find some blue yarn now because i had this grandiose idea of having a kind of a light blue um bottom to this jumper because i wanted to go into the blue i thought it would be lovely like a happy jumper sweater i keep on switching them up but you get where i'm coming from um so i went down to who's leading here in oslo um because they have a very good choice of roma yarns like finul and you know bums and tretros as what i've used in this blanket they have like a great selection um and i was going through the whole wall i was looking at the different colors and i couldn't find a match to this yarn this color and i was so eager to continue that i was like okay let me just look into the other brands that they have because they also have sunless i believe and uh Hillesvog yarns as well and i found that what it looked like you know like when you're <laughs> it's not always so easy to match perfectly like i was trying to like twist the yarns together just to see like how, if they would blend enough and i was kind of like mm, probably not gonna blend perfectly or not as good as i would like but anyway what i ended up using uh buying is solia um which is uh norwegian pelt wool and it's 100 grams to 350 meters, which is the same as the Villa Silla woolen yarn that I have. And this is what I have left of that, by the way. Um, and even though they are same on, like, they're supposed, like, both of them are supposed to be 50 grams, no, uh, 100 grams to 350 meters. This one is probably spun tighter so that this yarn is so much thinner I would say than this one is this fills up the stitches a lot more uh, so when I got home I did a little bit of like I did color work I guess I did like every second stitch here I did with one and then the other and you know tried to blend it in and probably should have done it for a couple more rows but then the purple was coming through so heavy that, you know, I didn't do more. I could have done like more pixelation so it would blend in more. I also thought, you know, I could have added a kit silk. And I even did at one point buy a kit silk thinking like if I blend these two, then maybe I would get the perfect blend. But by then I had already like knitted quite a lot. And I was like, I'm not going to be ripping out. But... um. Yeah, this was like when adding this yarn, I had to, I started knitting with and I realized it was quite thinner. So the fabric was more see-through, more kind of like airy than this fabric here. So I ripped it back um, and I went down quarter of a needle size I believe it was and I did the increases that I omitted higher up I did them here so I would add more stitches um so yeah even though I went a little bit down on the size of needle it would still work out kind of thing and it did it worked out perfectly you can't really tell well I don't know, it's kind of puckering more right now, I feel like, and it has done, but 
maybe it's the light that's bringing out all kind of like a little yeah anyhow um i'm really happy with the way it turned out i love 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 this yarn it's so i find it so lovely to work with um um i think i mentioned a couple of times before that i'm a big lover of pure wool and this is like i felt it because it's like a dream to work with um so i'm definitely gonna be knitting more out of this yarn going forward and yeah, I used up 72 grams of the 100 gram ball of this uh, color changing one and about 150 grams of the Sölja and the colorway, by the way, I think it's Stövet Blis, no, Stövet Flyblå, so it's kind of like a dusty plain gray. But really is, um, I would more almost say more like a denim color. Not quite, but more like on, um, yeah, denim, petrol -y denim kind of thing. Well, petrol is probably not right because that leans more into green. But it's a pretty color. I'm, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, yeah. I might put some pictures. Here, or I've probably already done it or maybe a video snippet of sorts so yeah that was my dandelion or rainbow sweater then I was meant to go for a knit night with my girlfriends and I had just cast off I think I don't remember what it cost, so it doesn't really matter. But anyway, I didn't have anything on my needles and I wanted something that was light and easy to take with me. I did think about a couple sweaters. That's not light and easy, I know, but I would something that's like not too demanding, like you can actually do it without thinking. So going back and forth and I was looking, oh yeah, that's how it was. I was looking for a sock pattern that I wanted to knit again, like and I, could, uh, I have knitted before and I wanted to, to knit it again because those socks are starting to wear out big time. Um, and when I was looking for that pattern, I stumbled upon this one here. Um, this is... They are called Gjestetöffel fra Fillehauen, which is pretty much like your guest slippers from scraps pile i guess um this one here was found by Anne Mo Anne Sundba. Uh, had, had been sent to be like cut up to be filled as scraps or like used as scraps um, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, it was supposed to be recycled to wool, that's what it was. But she liked the technique, the short row technique. This is a free pattern. Um, you can look it up actually on... Um, no, that's not the name of it. Um, I'll link it. Um, you can look it up on Ravelry. Uh, it, is a, uh, it is written down in a Norwegian article, but I, I saw there's quite a few... Uh, people who said that they run it through Google Translate and they were just fine um, using that translation together with some pictures. So yeah. Um, so here are mine. Oh, that's really hard to show, I guess. This is my version of it. Because um, yeah, I was... I, I saw that the pattern called for um, Reuma Tretroskarn and I just, yeah, thought I was prepared, but like always I'm not. I pulled out my bag of Reuma Tretros and put together colors I thought would make me happy. And these are definitely the colors that make me happy. Like bright and colorful, happy, 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 going into spring and everything. 
So the pattern in itself is constructed a little bit differently than what I did. Uh, it's you cast on the stitches here, you knit back and forth to here, and then you do the short rows, then you turn around and to the end, and then you sew behind and uh, under um, under the, the the slipper. I didn't want to have a seam in my heel and under the foot. So what I did was a Turkish cast on and just knit it back and forth. Um, that meant that when I got to the point where I was supposed to do the short rows, I um, ended up breaking the yarn at the edge and worked myself like slipped the stitches so that I had divided them into two and then worked the pattern or like the short rows out probably a better way of doing it but this is what my mind was able to work out at the time and um, and uh, what I did was that I did this three needle bind off uh, to sew them together like I, I think I knitted one row with the color on both sides and then just did them um, yeah that's what it was uh i like yeah like i said i broke the yarn like or like cut the yarn up here and then started working from the middle there all the way till i was supposed to do this one last color of this pink and then i started working again like from the very edge and then work through so that I would have just one row of this color and then did the three needle bind off. Um, also I found the pattern or like the slipper to be very open so I <laughs> I've done all those things with this. I sewed together and I did some like uh, yeah I don't know what this what the stitch is called but I kind of just kind of yeah made this sort of pretty stitch to make it melt together so there's a lot of things going on here so if I would make them again I would make a couple diff like couple modifications like couple more modifications uh, I was thinking about widening the heel that's one of the things i thought about like and i also thought because i was i did try to um crochet an edge but i didn't really like the way it looked so that's why i actually kind of ended up with this sewing together there but i think if i would make them again um then i would probably start working in the round like right about, right about there, or like maybe before, but at least there because I find this fits my foot better now. And I also thought that a an eye cord would be really pretty uh, on on the top of this slipper. So yeah, it's a big possibility I'll make more of them because they don't take too much yarn, and that's, I mean. I, I just have leftovers and uh, I, th I thought like, you know, because the pattern says you're supposed to have 100 grams of the main color, which in my case was the pink, like the light pink here. And I had worked all the way up, I think there, and then I ran out of the yard and I was like, I don't want to put a new color in there now. If it would have been happy, if it would have happened before, like say, if I found it there, and I like if I knew here already that I was run out, I could like do a different color maybe there. But I wasn't gonna be ripping back a lot, so I just put in like a white heel instead. So it's fine. This is supposed to be small slippers you can slip on. Yeah, like really hard to show like properly, but they're cute, they're quick. And yeah, I can recommend the pattern if you want if you wanna try. They can, there's a lot of beautiful versions of them on Ravelry, so have a look. Maybe that's something you can do out of your scraps. Then there's a new yarn in the town, so to say. Um, 
Roma has uh, released a new yarn called Fivel, which is a 100% wool yarn. And it is 50 grams, 200 meters, so it's a DK weight. And of course, me as many others. Oh, yeah, upside down. Um, I wanted to try them out. Uh, I have, well, actually, that's not quite the right way of putting because I had not worked with it, but I had touched both a pre washed and washed version, and I find the yarn to be really nice and soft and lovely. And my twin stepdaughters, they are actually, they actually have a birthday today. They're 20, turning 23 today. And I thought that I want to give them like an extra little gift. And then I thought about the hat, the free pattern hat that they have, which is this one. It's called Billy Ribelue. So I made one for each of them. It's really nice. I mean, it's like on my forehead, it's tiny tad prickly, but not to a degree that bothers me too much. Uh, so yeah, if you want to try something new, then I can recommend this yarn. Or definitely for a sweater if you are too sensitive for a mm, woolly wool hat on your forehead. But yeah, so I whipped up these. Um, you can pretty much knit up one in a day or one and a half days if you, so to say, take the time for it. I was this is like for me it was like TV knit. I was watching a series with my man, and I could just knit it while I was doing that. They yeah, have this really nice, simple decreases so yeah quite mindless knit and the pattern is actually I mean I uh, have followed the pattern even though it is a simple one by one rib it's called Billy Beluga did I say that and you use under I haven't measured measured for, oh, blah, 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 measured the yarn that I have left but it uses up about definitely one and a half rolls. I will make a note on the screen here. But yeah, this is the original. And yeah, it's by Reuma. Um, you can get a hold of it on their book page as a free pattern. The hat that is, and uh, also with it, a pair of mittens. Let me see if I can. Oh, I didn't have that prepared. No, I actually can't say that. But they have a, like a pair of very simple mittens as well. Uh, that comes along with that hat pattern. Um, so yeah, it's... The pattern calls for 4mm needles, I believe, on... Um, the hat and I was having trouble getting gauge with it so I went down to three and a half yeah it's needle size four um so yeah I knit them on three and a half and I must say like I'm, I don't know if it's just me but I, I, I have noticed that if I've been knitting a lot on less fluffy yarn or like that is more kind of oh, not going to show that yet hmm, later on um this one i can take um i would say this is more like there's this less fluff to it it's more to the size kind of like i don't know how to explain that i think i just feel like this kind of collapses more because it's more loosely spun i guess so i find like if I've been knitting a lot of things with yarn that is tight as spun and then go to a loosely spun yarn, it's like I have this sort of like, it takes a little bit of time to adjust to it. So that when I was knitting the first 
hat. I actually knit it slightly tighter than I did with the second one. Let me see if I can show it to you. The second one is just, well, it doesn't really show now, but it's there when I was, it's just like a tiny tad. No, it's not showing at all. It's, it, I mean, when I lay them fat, fa <laughs> when I lay them flat, I can see that the one is just tiny tad bigger than the other. So yeah, I don't know if it's just me, but I do see that, you know, I have the tendency of being a little too tight with knitting on kind of looser spun yarn if I've been knitting a lot on, like, say, sock yarn, which is tight as fuck. But anyway, those are the two hats that I finished. And that's it for finished objects but since i have this book out i also want to show you another quick pattern in here which i'm contemplating making it's this one there like i like these colors but i'll show you a better picture of the jumper in itself it's this one there I like this cozy oversized easy throw on type of thing yeah so that's in the future and yeah, it's Roma uh, 425. You bet. Lovely year, year, yarn. I can recommend it. Absolutely. This reminds me, I'm going to do a little side step here. It reminds me of that somebody asked me under the comments last time if this jumper, the pattern for it was also available in English. Mine was uh, a green version. And I checked it on Ravelry. I couldn't find it there. And I reached out to the designer. And she said no. It's only available in uh, Norwegian, unfortunately. But if you are avid knitter, I'm sure you can figure this out. Because it is a Raglan degrees there and yeah i can't say much without giving away the pattern and that's really not okay so i'm sorry i can't really help you there that's that then for works in progress i still have my big frisk shawl on my needles since last, I think I've added on, like, I know, I've added only one uh, repeat of the pattern because those repeats are long now. Like, well, rather long and you have to pay attention so I don't kind of like lose the mohair stitches, which are tiny, tiny, tiny. But I still enjoy it. I pull it out uh, here and there, so to say. But yeah, I've been obsessed with this jumper and then I had the slippers and the hats and so yeah it's it's kind of um been not getting so much love since the last time but i will finish it because i do love it i think it's gonna be beautiful um let me oh yeah i can take that one as well yeah since last i have cast on a pair of socks which are called Mystic Spiral Socks by Josh, Josh, oh, Josh Ricks, Rikes, Ricks. And he actually used to have a um, podcast as well here on uh, YouTube. And his uh, name was Geonitrix. And so maybe you've heard of him before, maybe not. I only have a black and white picture. Let me see. I'm gonna have to maybe do like this. So the pattern is it intended for self-striping yarn? Just yeah, I can show this. Or, um, so you get this stripe that goes kind of like diagonally there, and you also get that. It's not the best picture, especially when they're like black and white, but then you get also this diagonal stripe going higher up on the leg. I have knit these yarn, this yarn, these socks before, and I love them. I find them to actually have a quite a good 
grip around my foot if i can put it like that but this they fit really really well and yeah like i said i have knit these before i knit them out of a turtle pearl yarns i might put in a picture maybe and these are toe up socks and this is my yarn and this is how far i cut them those this far so you see i have two and the stripes are going like that and i have just barely started there doing the diag diagonal stripe on the leg and that goes in the other di uh, direction from the one around the foot um, and the yarn is my Pavlova by Arctic Crafts so this yarn is amazing to knit on or knit with knit with so uh but yeah mine is this uh pinks and whites and the red which i think is so pretty it's all the and i love it it's kind of squishy and i was thinking i could try to put it on the soft poster but i don't know if there's really any point to that yet shoes up yeah because the, di the, the diagonal stripes will be going in the wrong like it's not gonna show as well, but I can show it a little bit anyway. I'm babbling, I'm sorry. But yeah, um and also what I did, um I prefer knitting cuff down. That is like my go-to. And like sitting here and saying those words now, I realize I could have easily Mm, turned the pattern to be from cuff down so i don't really know why i didn't do that but anyway the reason why i don't enjoy toe up is often those heels i find to be too small so the instep kind of gets too tight but just recently i've heard on two separate podcasts one being lollipy knits from Belfast and um, Knitting Traditions, Inga, they both mentioned the same thing, which was that uh, instead of just dividing the sock in two and knitting the heel on half of the stitches, they, I think Inga said like she adds four stitches, like two on each side, I think, something like that. and. That's what I've done. I've added like two more stitches on each side and that seems to be working fine because that gives me a bit more room around my instep. Is that what it's called? Wrist? Instep? Well, I think you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, that's one change I've done there, which is not huge, but I think they're fun, fun, fun socks, a fun pattern. I mean, and yeah, like I said, they sit well on my foot. And I love the yarn. I think it's so pretty. It's like sweet. And they are actually quite matching, like this far. Quite the same. Um... I did divide the yarn in two, so I have another one, like, so I can work in at the same time. So if I figure out some changes or something, I can implement them on both as I go without forgetting that, that I did as a change. And these socks are living in my new bag, which I bought. Look at this fabric. I mean, like, hello. Does this remind you of something? <laughs> oh, 
I thought it was so beautiful and I think this pink white soft is gonna matching this flower perfectly inside so and this is also made by Inger Johanne whom I mentioned before um, yeah she she's the one that gifted that beautiful bag with the gray blue white tones um, and the quality of this bag is just phenomenal and I think I'm falling in love more and more with the drawstring type of bags I mean I still love the zippers don't get me wrong but I do love this one as well it's just so beautiful I mean what's there not to love right and I guess I'm gonna have to come with a confession since I'm talking about gifts from her no, I'll leave it for later, like with my purchases. I'll finish with the knitting bit now. I've also dragged out two projects that have been UFOs for a little while. One longer than the other. We're not going to be mentioning exactly how long, but hmm, one has been on needles for a very long time. The other one longish, like over a year and a half now. So the first one, which is like less of a UFO, is this one. I have shown it to you before. I showed it to you one of my in one of my first episodes, if not the very first one. What I've done since uh, I showed it to you is I've tried it on again. I have come to terms with, uh, not terms, but I've decided that I like the placing of the pattern when it's like on me. It accentuates the right things. I do like the length of it as it is. I have bound off, and I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I think I just did a stretchy bind off where you knit one, knit two, and then knit those two together through the back loop, I think it did. And then knit one, then knit through those two again. So yeah, it's a nice stretchy edging and it's quite pretty I would say so I'm quite happy with that so I only need to knit sleeves which is not a lot it's gonna go quick especially since I've started to use shorter like circum circumference can't say the word now but yeah like the short needles uh shorties should I go twists is what I'm using now. Um, what I must say about this pattern is that the original one has a lot more interest to it, but I have left out a couple things because, like, yeah, I can show it to you. It has this beautiful texture and cables in it as well. And I started working that, but I didn't like it. It wasn't, it wasn't. I, I didn't enjoy knitting, I didn't like the look of it. I think if I would have liked the look of it, I would have like powered through. I think it's like a pearl stitch-ish. Which in itself is fine, it's doable. Um, it's a beautiful, like beautiful, beautiful pattern with this detail, but I wasn't enjoying that, so I have admitted it. So yeah, this is, um, I think I forgot to say it. Oswein Kensich by Inga Semmingsen. It's from this book, but I'm quite sure it's also available on Ravelry. If it is, I will link it below. I'm not sure about the languages, if it is only Norwegian or if it's also possible to get it in English. Uh, but anyway, the yarns that I'm using here is once again Hilleswalk, but this time it's Norsk Vilsau. Um, that's Norwegian wild sheep. Uh, so yeah, it is 100 grams to 350 meters. Really like this yarn. The feel of it and how the way it uh, knits up. I like that it's like some interest happening all the time. And it's not this solid color kind of thing. And the colors are 
Uh, let me see. Let me just pull up the right whole bands now. Uh, there it is. It's a uh, Verbit. Uh, she used to have a shop in Oslo. Now she's moved out of Oslo. But she's still coloring. She's still dyeing yarn. And this is a diet on a base from Hillesborg called Sol, which is like a sport weight yarn. 100 grams to 285 meters. And it's called Ranunkel, as in Ranunculus. And isn't it just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I think it's so beautiful. And the other yarn. Gosh, what is that? I actually do not have the it's it's on my other page the other one um but yeah I think there's this beautiful combination of yarns so I'm I have big plans of finishing that and getting it out of the bag and onto my body because I think that's gonna be beautiful because it, it is beautiful it has this beautiful interest going through all the way and like what's there not to love so yeah i just need to get off the sleeve island and yeah get it on my body then the other ufo i have decided to pull out and either finish it from where i have left it or maybe rip it out and start it over because i remember uh, struggling with the gauge and back then there wasn't really uh, a great choice of needles here in Norway. Um, all you could get were like these round numbers as in three millimeters, three and a half, four, four and a half. It wasn't any of those 325s or 375s. So I was struggling getting gauge, which was called for in the pattern. The pattern I'm going, um, the pattern I am knitting is called Grotti Setesta, which is grey in Setesta, which is this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful jumper. Um, with beautiful details. Let me just, sorry about the paper crinkling. And as you see, it's been in the bag for a while. I have not knitted on, so it's all crinkly and stuff, but it has these beautiful details, you know? A little bit of embroidery and then you have a little bit of color in there i know she has also yeah this was a gift to me i was gifted this because i wanted to knit it um and so this was a uh, a kit you could purchase so i have come this far um like i said i'm gonna have a proper look at it and see if I'm gonna continue or if I'm gonna rip it back and redo it, re knit it. Um, I didn't check how many years ago it is that I started, but it's it's been a few years. So, yeah, I want to finish this. I want this done. And oh, I'm losing stitches here. Just a moment. Uh, so yeah, this one has come out from its corners and I'm knitting this. The base is knit out of, again, Sölja, mm, Nature Grey, so it's an, like an undyed, I guess, um, grey. It is as it comes from a sheep. And then it's paired with Vilja, which is also Hilles folk. It's a lot of Hilles folk today. Uh, this one as well is like about a sports weight. It's 100 grams to 375 meters. Uh, it's uh, undyed natural white. And then there, they, uh, in that kit, you got the nuggets so to say for the colors that you need for the embroidery and those little um accent kind of rows that you knit so yeah aren't they gorgeous 
seems to be a theme i have a lot of pink <laughs> i love pink it makes me happy so yeah that is something that's like has been in my corner of shame for a long time but i'm thinking it's about time it comes out of it um because i want to clear out my corner of shame which is my ufos one way or other either i rip them out or i finish them but at least not have them lingering there forever and ever because it's beautiful yarn and um i don't want it to go to waste uh yeah so those were my ufos i have spoken about a couple plants they are not been scrapped or anything they just been put on kind of a hold i still want to cast on for the melted mirage by stephen west um which i think is so lovely mm. but i would say mine is more in a happy colors am i allowed to say that no oh. Um, no, uh, I, th I quite like his version, actually, his colors as well. But I'm not going to make it smaller and less thick. I think he has DK or double strands with fingering he uses. But I'm thinking of holding it one strand and that's enough. I don't need to make it more fluffy or bigger. Um... Let me segue into acquisitions. I have received yarn from Villa Silla Yarn. The Norwegian word is too close to my usual words, I guess, um, the words I use. Um, so this is like sponsorship, ad sponsorship uh the first one is this um lace weight it's pure wool lace weight i see he has the wrong tag on this because it says 100 grams to 350 meters this is not 350 meters this is closer to 800 meters i believe it is uh it's this beautiful beautiful lace yarn definitely not a sport weight if you look at it my finger it's this really thin beautiful yarn in these gorgeous colors it doesn't show up too well on the camera i must say it it gets so dark there maybe yeah this is more like it so you have these long shifts of this sort of lilac -y, beautiful color there then dark purple then you have some um like uh, petrol kind of color and then this sort of beautiful green. Um, I want to almost say like, you know, like those buds on like fresh buds on pine needle trees kind of thing. It's so beautiful. It's a beautiful green. Because it's, it's bright and like brighter than an olive green. It's more like, yeah, it makes me think of those shoots that come out or like all those buds that you get on pine trees and in in the spring but yeah it's so pretty so this one is um something that i'm considering of um having as a giveaway in the future so maybe if we decide if uh, if we well i haven't got any plans but if i'm have a giveaway and i if i have a cal of sorts or yeah then this will be a a gift it's really pretty and when talking about this i want to show you my uh, virus shawl by julia markard markard i will put the name i'm butchering i'm quite sure i made my uh shawl a couple years ago of a similar um yarn uh it's also estonian wool pretty much the same in the, the quality mm, so yeah this is all my rainbows <laughs> i'm like rainbows for days uh this i believe used to be a free pattern i don't think it is no it's definitely not anymore but i think it used to be 
it's this rather simple uh, crochet pattern you can just continue working on it till you write out a run out of yarn or if it's big enough or like yeah so <laughs> it blends into my jumper now there's <laughs> too many rainbows going on here but yeah I really like it it's so airy warm nice and even like being t next to my sensitive like area which is my throat I actually I mean it's a tiny bit prickly but I don't mind I use it like straight onto my skin without any problems so yeah um just an idea of like you know what one can make but there is so many beautiful designs so uh yeah this one was on the two millimeter hook that I made, so yeah, just an idea, just like idea as this kind of yarn. And I also got a um, plate of this kind of yarn. Uh, they call it pre yarn, and I think it uh, resembles what is called Plötelupi uh, by Eastex. Like unspun yarn uh, or neat hidden with these long color shifts so I haven't decided what I'm gonna make out of it I have uh, thought about maybe a shawl or something but it's so beautiful you have this beautiful beautiful like changes color changes like the softly transition from one to the other that's one of the things I really like about this uh, brand is that they are so soft like you can't really see the color changes. I had trouble seeing where the one color started and ended. It just went so nice and smooth. So yeah, those are some of what I've received as a sponsorship. And yeah, also I'm kind of collaborating with him now. Uh, so if you were to reach out to the shop Villa Silla, uh, through email, then I might be the one to be answering you on that. Um, and also, if you're interested in purchasing things there or yarn from there, then know that there is a solution being worked on for uh, being able to pay with card. Um, yeah, so that's under construction that's being worked on as we speak. Then acquisitions that I have bought myself is among other things was this bag which I thought was so beautiful I just could not not buy it and uh, I bought this template for a knitting bag no it's right this way and this I'm not sure if you're gonna be yeah well I can see it right there now it's like a template well it's a plexiglass see-through it gives you like centimeters and uh, what's so good about it is that one is that you can if you want to do a, like a two-part bag which is essentially something like this then you can cut those bits like with separate you kind of yeah or if you want to make a one big piece and you can just hold them together and what's good about these templates is that you see those little like slits there if you're using the cutting knife then you can slide far enough so it you know you cut it all the way into the corner but then it stops it doesn't cut you into the fabric too far but you get like far enough so it doesn't get stopped so you have like a little corner yet that you have to cut out by hand so I've been thinking about about buying this for a little while but I wanted to see them so it was um, great that Tadia was at the market where I bought them which I will tell you about in a little bit and I also got <laughs> everything just disappears because it's like see-through it's almost like I want to catch my ring light in it because then you can actually see it but anyway, it's this, uh, yeah, really not easy to show. Can I do it like this? Doesn't really help, 
but this is kind of meant to help you with pulling through um, I want to say rope but it's not the right word I know because it's well kind of rope thing so you slide it in from one there and there then you attach the let's call it rope for now for the purpose sake and then you can just pull it through and also if you're making kind of pipelines and you want to turn it around you can most probably utilize this and Thaddeus Munt, uh, he has all kind of different things. I mean, I have purchased the sock blocker from him. Oh, I can see all my fingerprints in this light now. <laughs> um, he's got quite a few sizes and uh, sock blockers. Yeah, actually, you can see his logo up there. Thaddeus Munt. Um, really great so sock blockers. Um, I'm really happy with them. Um... He is also working on a web shop as we speak. Um, so it will it would it will be easier to order. But you like if you are on Instagram, then you can look him up, and he has all his projects posted there, and you can look him up and send him a message, and yeah, order that way for now. And then Inger Johanne was so kind, and she gave another bag. Well, like, she wanted to give me two bags and she said, like, you know, do whatever you want to do with them. And I was like, oh, this looks nice and neutral. And I was like, oh, I'm going to give it away, give it away. And, but the more I looked at it, I was like, I have to have this for myself. So <laughs> I'm being greedy. I mean, look at this. This is beautiful green and this beautiful kind of lilac-y color on the front. So I'm being greedy. I'm keeping this for myself. Usually I've been good, you know, thinking like, no, this has been given as like, you know, you can give it away kind of thing. And so then I feel like I should give away. But this time I was like, I'm going to be greedy and I'm going to keep this. <laughs> Even though the way I said first, like, no, I'm probably going to give it away. Like, yeah. And let me buy one for myself, myself. But yeah, I think I'm going to keep this one. Um, and where I bought both Teddy's Mint um uh, this um knitting bag template and this bag from uh was a Sunday if you would uh market which is about one and a half hours from Oslo and I went there pretty much first and foremost because I've been so fortunate to meet a couple um of the podcasters uh, that I've been like following for a couple of years and they have turned out to be just as lovely in real life as they are on screen which is so lovely uh, so I've had a couple of moments where I've felt absolutely starstruck because it's been people I've been following for several years thinking they make such wonderful things like great projects and color combinations and they just inspire me so so much and when i saw that gunnirean uh, gunnis anglistic the maker of this bag was gonna be um at the market and i thought like i'm gonna go there i'm gonna just you know just even to say hi and you know make it a day trip just you know get out of the house a little bit because you know my days are as they are sometimes I have the energy sometimes I do not um, and um, so yeah I drove out there and I got in there and I was kind of having the plan of like I'm not gonna be spending any money I have so much yarn I don't need any more <laughs> and I was doing so well for such a long time uh, up until this is gonna be a little bit like back and forth but up until I was sitting by a, ta a table I was knitting there and I just threw a glance over my shoulder and I was like oh, I need that yarn I need that yarn in my life so I buckled under and I bought some yarn um, they are both called salmon pink and 
This one is 55% blue faced Leicester wool and 45% silk. So I was thinking I'm gonna make a hat out of this because I really like the color and it feels so pretty. And it is so short. And I've been making all these hats, so I was thinking I make a hat. I might change my mind, I might make something else out of it, but my original plan was to make a hat out of it. It's 100 grams to 212 meters. Oh yeah, and it is by Ull Design. <laughs> Look at that drape. <gasps> um, it is the same um, yarn brand that I'm using in my Dugfrisk, the shawl, like the pink uh, merino yarn. It's the same brand. Yeah, I mean. Drape, drape. <laughs> and then the other one is also so pretty, pretty, pretty. It's 72% kid mohair and 28% silk. And it is 420 meters per 50 grams. I mean, at first I thought I'll make a hat with those two combined, but then Gunnidan said like, well, if you add a plain mohair to this one and this one to something else, then you get so much more value for your money. And I was like, ooh, smart. You're smartly. But yeah, so I buckled. I bought, the bag was kind of fine because I thought it was pretty, even though I don't need bags so much to, well, some, well. Can you ever have too many? I feel kind of like I need to meet up with a, uh, a bit more before I buy more yarn, but I guess it's time to be kind and allow yourself things that bring you joy, right? But the knitting market, um, it was a really lovely knit, knit, knitting market. It was, there was quite a few vendors. Um, I will be posting some videos either while I'm talking or at the end of it. Um, and uh, I felt um, like uh, you have this knitting market here and also as well in Kulturhuse, like culture house kind of thing. And this is Kurbade, which is like, yeah, also kind of a culture house, right? Um, but I felt like the placing, spacing of the tables and the yarn was better it was easier to get to the tables to get to the vendors to see what i wanted to see maybe it felt like it because um oslo is bigger there's always bigger crowd coming in but then again i want to say well yes and no because it felt like all the vendors had good space to showcase what they had there was plenty of space to go around the table. Maybe, yes, you had to take a look over somebody's shoulder at one point or other, but uh, it was fully possible to see what people had to show and share and sell. Um, and yeah, it, it was wonderful. Uh, it was also very strange. <laughs> Because, um, you know, I still think of myself as this tiny, little, tiny, tiny new podcaster who nobody knows who is kind of thing. Uh, so, I, and also I, I tend to get a bit shy if I don't have people I know around me. Does that make sense? It doesn't bother me if somebody approaches me that I don't know. I can like handle that well, but I'm not one like goes over to somebody and necessarily starts talking and feels comfortable with it and it's really great at small talk um there's quite a few people that are way better than i am in that sense and one of them being uh Vigidis from <laughs> uh Toretta and Rang, which is like two knit and two pearl or two mm. difficult ones and one not so difficult <laughs> like if you want to translate like that but it, it's you like it's it's two two knit and two pearl but sometimes like you know if the one one of them is being difficult because it's three sisters uh then they say well you're being the difficult one today that one pearl bump kind of thing 
and she's like you know come on over here and like greet this person and that person and, are you following her yet no okay you have to look up and look and i was kind of like feeling small <laughs> um and i've been thinking about it afterwards kind of like i wish in a way i had a little bit more if i may say so from outside perspective i feel like americans you are so good uh with taking space and not kind of being embarrassed about having to do so or like i mean there's always different people like with extroverts introverts and stuff but it's kind of more cultural to be so open and to talk to everybody whilst here in like norway and in scandinavia and from estonia where i've grown up like i'm a little bit over the average uh in the sense that i do like to talk to people and i'm i am more like um inclined to go over and say hi hello compared to many of my countrymen so to say but still i have a long way to go and i kind of envy you this effortless here i am yes this is me let me sell my product kind of thing and i'm like oh i don't want to bother you no 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 i don't want to <laughs> but yeah no big this she it was wonderful um to meet um i must say i'm a little bit starstruck i was i am still kind of like feeling like <sighs> I've been following her for a long, long time, and also on a Karianne, oh my God, Karianne, her sister in the same podcast. I look up to her. She's like this speed knitter. I like she just spews out the blanket within like a week. I'm like happy if I finish like this sweater in a week, and she comes with a whole blanket. She made this um, cozy memory type of blanket with like these frames that go around this. Um, the bricks in the middle um so wonderful people yeah that i got to say hello to and yeah i guess i have to become more brave and not to be so bothered that you know i don't know i, I don't i don't know does it make sense that i'm saying like is it just me or like I do feel like it's a kind of Scandinavian thing or yeah I don't know how far into Europe that goes um, don't have enough experience with um, other Europeans in that regard I feel so yeah no I, I've had some beautiful like knit nights or um, cafes or whatever you want to call them um so worthwhile like driving to different places meeting people um because i've met quite a few <laughs> new people lately and being absolutely starstruck and like having trouble with my bending my mind around the fact that you, you're not on my screen you're actually like in front of me and i can actually talk to you and we can like share ideas and thoughts and experiences and you know um <laughs> it's so strange um yeah but so 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 fun so yeah i feel like i've been all over the place i don't know if i made sense along the way if i lost my thread somewhere because i do do that i do lose my kind of thread sometimes mm, yeah so if I didn't make sense, I'm sorry. If I did make sense, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, yeah, what else? Otherwise, life is quite good. Um, like I mentioned before, like there are days that are good. There are days that are less good. As long as I'm following um, the signs from my body, I guess, is when I have better days. It's like when I actually, when I can actually get something out of the day um which is good because that feels like i'm participating in life again um because i've been saying no to a lot of things for a very long time because i just been simply too tired and i still see that you know at times i get so tired that i can't understand the simplest of things that i might be reading or um when i'm in a conversation i 
see that I cannot follow what you're saying anymore. So if you are any one of those people who I've spoken to lately and I have felt distant or unengaged or um, not replying quite as you were kind of like not re responding correctly in, in maybe in in regards to the question that was asked it's it's not that i'm not interested in it's not that i'm not listening to what you're saying it's just i'm really having like trouble maybe taking in everything around me it's getting a little bit overwhelming but because i want to participate in life so like so so bad um i'm pushing myself out there and saying a little bit like if that um so i might come off a little uninterested or stupid or silly or whatever because that i'm sure that can happen because i do see like how i fall out of thoughts and um topics and stuff um i still want to do it because i i, I want to take part of life i don't i don't want to be like lost in this phase of no energy or or yeah yeah <laughs> anywho i don't think there's too much more to talk about um i'll mention again like if you want to be a recipient recipient of a gift in my next month episode then you have to comment below this one and then you have to uh, depending on what you want to receive spring autumn or gift for general but you can add all three words if you're interested in all of them or just one or two if uh, you are more like I don't like this but I like that and Inger Johanna and Hilda Andrews was it? Hilda Hilda Andrews Get back to me with your full name and address and I will send you a package. Yeah. I think that's it. So happy rest of the February to all of you. I will see you in March and then we'll celebrate um, with some gifts going out to you as a thank you for watching for spending time with me um it's so appreciated so thank you for following along and for surprising commenting and yeah thank you thank you thank you have a lovely february happy knitting and we'll talk soon traditional custom clothes here. Yeah.